In a previous video, I built a thermal probing system for a rifle chamber, and in this video, I'm going to actually use that to perform a test. This video is actually the reason that I built that thermal probe in the first place. See, I have a hunting rifle. It's a Christensen Arms Ridgeline, and it has a carbon fiber wrapped barrel. And I've kind of always been curious about how much of an impact that carbon fiber has on how quickly that barrel heats up. Uh, you read different things online about carbon fiber barrels, and most people kind of presume that carbon fiber is an insulator and it would tend to make your barrel heat up faster as far as the actual bore. Now, the outside of the barrel will actually not heat up as quickly because carbon fiber is typically viewed as an insulator, and so the heat doesn't actually travel to the outside of the barrel. So whenever you're shooting a carbon fiber barrel, you can actually touch the barrel and it won't really feel that hot. Um, but that's actually because it's an insulator rather than a good conductor of heat. But that could actually spell problems for the bore because it's actually kind of the heat in the throat that really shortens barrel life. And so by wrapping the barrel in carbon fiber, it, it could contribute to faster wearing barrels if you shoot long strings of fire. Now, there is one caveat to this, and that is Proof Research actually claims that their carbon fiber barrels uh, conduct heat very, very well. And I believe that they actually put aluminum into the resin mixture to help conduct heat. Now, I don't have a Proof Research barrel. I wish I did. But, you know, this is a small channel, and uh, I guess you could say that we face some budget constraints. So if anybody wants to uh, donate $1,000 to the channel so that I can go purchase and install a Proof Research Barrel, I will get right to testing that. But in this video, I'm going to be doing a head-to-head -head test for two of my rifles. Both are chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, one is the Tika CTR that I have, and it has an all-steel barrel. The carbon fiber barrel, again, is on my Christensen Arms Ridgeline. Both of these barrels actually have fairly similar shank diameters. I think the Tika measures out at close to one and one eighth inch diameter, um, whereas the Ridgeline is closer to like one and a quarter or 1.2 inches at the shank. But they're kind of similar thickness at that point in the barrel, and that's where I'm going to be doing most of the measurements. Now, uh, the Ridgeline does have more of a uh, straight profile than the Tika, but if anything, that should advantage it by giving it more material to disperse heat into. So I'm going to be using some Hornady match ammunition for this test. Uh, the bullet weights are 147 grains, but I'm not really going for accuracy in this test. Basically, I'm going to start off with both barrels at ambient temperature. So whenever I got up to the range, I did set both rifles down and waited for them to acclimate. Now, there was some issues here because uh, it's, it's hot out, and the ambient temperatures did rise a few degrees uh, from the start to the finish of this test, but uh, as you'll see, a few degrees won't actually make much difference. So the actual test, I basically got each rifle set up, and I fired 10 rounds in succession uh, fairly quickly. And then I immediately put the thermal probe into the chamber and I monitored temperatures over the next 10 minutes. Um, I did this for each rifle while tracking the ambient temperatures, the temperature from the probe at the throat, and the probe at the chamber wall. In addition, I placed one probe on the outside uh, just about an inch away from the receiver body on the outside of the barrel, just to give me one more data point um, that can kind of help measure how quickly heat transfers from the chamber to the outside of the barrel to give some indication about the thermal conductivity of the barrel. Now that said, this test is really more about the data, so let's go into Excel and see what happened. All right, so I'm going to walk through the data, and I do apologize. I know it's a wall of numbers, but trust me, we're going to be able to make some sense out of this. So I do want you to keep in mind, again, the protocol, I shot 10 rounds, and that was done for each rifle within just a few minutes, so about uh, 10 shots within two and a half to three minutes. And then the probe was placed into the chamber 
within five to 10 seconds of the end of that shot string. So what you're looking at are the temperatures um, in this first row, this negative one, this is kind of the initial state of the rifle prior to firing. Um, and so you can see with the TK I shot it first, it was 84 degrees out. And I've, down here, I've got the differences. Uh, it was within pretty much a half a degree of ambient temperature. Um, whenever I shot the ridgeline, it was about 86 to 87 degrees outside. So it had warmed up two or three degrees. But again, it was within a degree of ambient temperature. So both rifles were ambient um, before the firing commenced. So the time zero numbers, this is the initial values uh, right whenever I stuck the probe in. Now, there's a lot of noise here because the probe does take a second to kind of ramp up. Um, through its rolling averages. Um, and so I don't really consider this a good data point just because, again, there was a lot of transition at that initial measurement that you can see in the data. Uh, everything was still, frankly, warming up and heat was distributing very quickly. Um, and so what you actually see, you can see it on the Tika and on the Ridgeline, the initial throat temperature um, was actually much lower than the next reading after a minute. Um, the same thing happened on the ridgeline. It warms up quite a bit during that first minute as kind of the heat really sets in. And the outside, um, and this is the external probe, so the outside of the barrel was actually hotter initially than the throat, which was very interesting to me. Um, again, and that was on both rifles, so that was just the uh, the initial kind of measurement. Now, the first real measurement that I think has quality to it is the one minute measurement. So all of these are taken at one minute intervals um, out to 10 minutes. So um, what we see is there's an initial sharp rise in temperature and then it slowly declines over time. Uh, the chamber wall does not heat up nearly as hot as the throat. Um, that was to be expected. The external sensor, this is not necessarily the most critical data because I wasn't super precise in where I placed that in relationship to the throat. Um, but it does jump up pretty good and it does get pretty hot. Um, but it, it also cools quite rapidly because it is on the outside of the barrel and so it does cool off a little quicker than the rest. Um, similar kind of patterns occur in the ridge line. Now I'll get into the comparison between these two, but um, the throat uh, gets quite hot, the chamber not quite as much, and the outside of the barrel um, close to the chamber is also quite warm, but does cool off the fastest. Now, the difference between the two rifles, um, in order to, to have a fair comparison, because the ridgeline did start off at just a, a few degrees higher, um, I'm looking at the differences from ambient here, and this is where you get better uh, data when you're talking about temperatures because all temperatures are relative. Um, and so these are the really interesting data points. And again, I'm going to go ahead and ignore the first two rows because the first was kind of the starting conditions and the next was that initial temperature, which it's just too noisy, I think, to be reliable. But what we do see is that the Tika jumps up about 24 degrees, 24 and a half degrees, um, above ambient at the throat within a minute after firing, whereas the ridgeline jumps up 32 and a half degrees. So quite a bit higher temperatures in that carbon fiber barrel. Um, if you look at the chamber, uh, roughly 11, 11 and a half degrees for the Tika, close to 15 degrees um, for the carbon fiber ridgeline. And then the outside of the barrel and this is where it's interesting. Um, the Tika barrel got hotter initially than the Ridgeline. Uh, I'm going to look at this a little bit more in a second, but whenever you think about it, a better conducting barrel will heat up the outside faster compared to a less thermally conductive barrel. So this temperature difference here on the outside um, makes some sense from the standpoint of carbon fiber is acting like an insulator the outside of the barrel is not getting as high above ambient, even though the inside is much hotter. Again, because it's acting as an insulator. So over here on the right, I have some charts. So let's look at some charts. 
Okay, so I have zoomed out so that we can get a good look. Now, um, both of these, this is all of the data, and so you can see the big temperature rise up to the peak, and the ridgeline did have quite a bit higher peak. And again, all of this is measured relative to ambient. So these are relative temperature measurements rather than direct temperature measurements. I'm looking at the differences. And you do see that ridgeline gets much hotter um, inside of the chamber at the throat. Now, um, if I clip off the kind of extraneous data here, and so let me pull these data points away. And so here I've got just the, uh, the post-firing measurements. And so from one minute out to 10 minutes post firing. And you do see, again, um, the the all steel CTR barrel, it just doesn't get nearly as hot um, it, and it drops off uh, actually a little faster. Now it's hard to tell in this chart. And one thing that does cause some problems in just the graphical analysis is that hotter things cool off faster because cooling um, is about temperature differentials. And so the bigger the temperature differential between the ambient conditions and the object, the object cools off faster. So um, these are not leveled for temperature. So by looking at this, it doesn't really tell us which is cooling off quicker. It does say that the chamber of the ridgeline definitely got a lot hotter with the same amount of firing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust because we actually have a couple of data points that are comparable for temperature. And that kind of allows me to take a look at which one of these barrels cools off faster. And that is, if you look um, in the second minute post firing, the throat of the Tika was at 22.7 degrees above ambient. And the Christensen Arms, the ridgeline was 22.7 above ambient uh, five minutes after. So we can actually line these points up and see at this point, from 22.7 degrees above ambient on, which one decreased in temperature faster. Okay, so I've got these lined up. Don't pay attention to the bottom axis. It's a little off just because of how I had to manipulate this thing to, uh, to get these lined up. But these are lined up based on the starting point of 22.7 degrees above ambient. So here's where you can see that Tika barrel, that CTR line, is lower. It does cool off faster than that carbon fiber wrapped barrel. Now, um, the difference gets larger over time. It's hard to see exactly whether this gap widens over time, but we can actually calculate the differences pretty easily. Um, and so if I just do a, a diff here and I say, all right, what's the difference between um, the ridgeline bore temperature minus the Tika at one minute intervals, they start off at zero. One minute after the Tika is 0.7 degrees cooler. And as we go out over the next five minutes, it progresses to be 1.2 degrees cooler. So starting at the same temperature uh, over five minutes, the CTR does cool off, uh, it gets to about a degree um, over five minutes. Now that's not a huge difference. Um, but it is significant. It's also worth pointing out, um, you know, it got to that ambient temperature uh, several minutes quicker um, than the, the carbon fiber wrap barrel. So yeah, it heats up less and it cools off quicker. Uh, look, carbon fiber is an insulator. This should not be surprising. Again, anybody that tells you, no, 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 carbon fiber, it, it's got, no, no, look, it's an insulator. It's going to cause your chamber and your bore to heat up faster and it won't cool off as quickly. Now, again, let me say I'm not talking about proof carbon barrels because I don't have one and I haven't tested one of those. So maybe it would perform better and I'd love to try it. But um, this barrel for sure. No, th this barrel definitely heats up faster. Now, uh, the last little piece of data that I I'll look at is, you know, after 10 minutes, where did we end up? Um, 10 minutes post firing, the Tika was about nine degrees above ambient still. Um, the chamber wall was about five and a half degrees above ambient and the outside of the barrel about seven degrees above ambient. The Christensen arms, well, it was close to 14 degrees uh, above ambient in the throat. Uh, the chamber wall was close to nine degrees above ambient and about seven, seven and a half degrees above ambient for the outside of the barrel. 
So it did take quite a bit longer for that to cool off. And kind of if you extrapolate based on this, um, the Tika at that point uh, was four or five minutes ahead. Like you have to not just think about the temperature difference, but how much time is that? You know, whenever I line these two points up, well, this is at minute two for the Tika. It's at minute five for the Christians in Arms Ridgeline, that carbon fiber barrel. So the Tika was already like three minutes ahead at that point. And after 10 minutes, it's four or five minutes ahead. So um, the fact that it, it heats up less and it cools off faster, um, it's a significant amount of time, right? I mean, it's cooling off much quicker whenever you think about how much time um, that actually adds up to. So um, all that said, you know, I, I think that's my conclusion. This is not an in-depth technical analysis. This is not a bunch of repeated samples. Um, it's just one test, but in this test, which I think is fairly valid, you know, both of these barrels have similar diameters. It was the same box of ammunition for both rifles, right? It was, you know, 20 shots. I used one box of, uh, of Hornady, you know, match ammo. So same ammo, same caliber, uh, similar diameters. The only difference uh, in these measurements was, well, one's a carbon fiber wrap barrel and the other's all steel. And, you know, not surprisingly, the steel barrel didn't heat up as as much um, in the chamber and it cooled off quicker. And, you know, that's just a piece of information for people to keep in mind um, demonstrated in this test. Now, um, again, I'd love to test a, a proof carbon fiber barrel because they claim that they do better. But until then, I, I'm going to just view carbon fiber barrels they're great. Um, they have some good advantages as far as weight versus stiffness um, and things like that. They certainly look cool, um, but they're, you know, carbon fiber, it's an insulator. It's not a good conductor of heat. And so that's where I'm going to stop. So uh, if you got any good comments, feel free to leave them below. I am sure that, you know, there's some smart people out there that can probably uh, give me some feedback on something I could do better. Um, one thing I would like to do in the future is maybe build uh, data collection into uh, my little monitor. And so that way, you know, I had to record all this by hand and it might be good to see the the traces over time. And I could probably put in like an SD card reader or something to record data um, over this 10 minutes rather than having to do it manually. That would give me a lot more data points and maybe, you know, maybe that would be valuable, but I don't know. Um, but you know, if you do have any feedback like that, please feel free to leave it below because I'm all ears. Uh, other than that, that's all I've got for you. I appreciate it.